I'm going to show you how to create a stitched text effect in Affinity Designer. To start with, I'm going to make sure that my Snapping Manager is enabled. I'm going to go to the View menu, Snapping Manager, and uh, verify that Enable Snapping is turned on. Now I'm going to select a shape from the uh, tools on the left, the Rounded Rectangle tool. I'm going to find the center of the canvas by um, just moving my cursor until I see both the green vertical line and the red horizontal line. I'm going to drag from the center and with the command key held I'm going to just drag that out to um, keep scaling it based on that center of the canvas. So I've got my first object and you can see I've already got some uh, dashed lines around the side. I'm going to go ahead and disable that because I don't want that on this particular shape. But I am going to select it and move that onto its own layer. I'm going to duplicate that. And again with it selected, I'm going to just grab that corner, start shifting it. I'm going to hold the command key and I'm going to hold the shift key so that I can both uh, resize it based around that center point and keep the uh, scaling proportional. Well, that looks about right, but I don't like where those sides are. So down here on the lower right where the uh, transform palette is, I'm going to make sure that uh, for the width and height dimensions that this little chain link off to the right is not checked. And for the width, I'm just going to tweak this until it looks about the same as the gap between the top of the shape and the top of the shape behind it. And we could go a little more. Uh, maybe just a just one more. I'm gonna go go ahead and do 970 pixels, and that looks pretty even. Now I'm gonna go back up here on the right, select the color palette. I don't want it filled, so I'm gonna click the little no fill chip. I'm gonna pick the stroke. And let's go ahead and give that a, uh, a white color. I'm going to click the stroke palette, click on the dash line style, and here we can make some adjustments to what that stitch is going to look like. Now, the numbers down here at the bottom for the dash, that's going to be your first, your first uh, dash shape. Let's go ahead and make that a little longer. The second one is the gap after that first shape. Let's go ahead and leave that where it is. The third one is the second dash shape. Let's make that the same. And you can see I've already got a two entered for that. Now phase is going to shift the entire stitch. So if uh, you had an object that had sharper corners and you had these uh, dash lines um, kind of chopped off or not looking correct, you could tweak it over just a smidge by entering values here. So uh, it will shift it over just a pinch and you can enter partial values, so 1.5 is a valid uh, a valid value there for that box. Uh, I don't actually need that on this, sh on this shape, so I'm going to go ahead and put it back to zero. And that stitch looks relatively good. So now I'm going to select that layer again. I'm going to click on effects. I'm going to give it a bevel and emboss. Let's see if I can see both of these together. Um, I'm going to tweak the direction of the lighting. And this is not constrained to just the outer edge. You can also uh, shift this uh, direction so that it is more over the top of your object. That uh, highlight is really strong, so I'm going to reduce the radius on that. And I'm going to reduce the screen on that. So it's just a, a little more subtle. We could probably tweak that up just a just a bit. And you don't want to get too too crazy with it. Now, I actually, I'm not bothered by that uh, shadow, so I'm going to leave that for now. 
Um, our next step is going to be to add some text. So let's go ahead and grab our artistic text tool here on the left. I'm not really concerned with where it's going to be in the center here. I'm just going to drag it out, pick my size. We'll be adjusting it more in a minute. Um, let's type some text. Oops. Okay, I'm going to select all that text with uh, Command A. And then the font that I'm going to use is a nice thick font. I don't want the dashed line around the outside of that, so let's go ahead and turn that off. Um, click on the color palette, select your outline, no outline. I'm going to grab my move tool. I'm going to select the text. I'm going to center that. Okay. Now, um, actually, I want to center that vertically as well. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this layer. And for my background layer, let's go ahead and turn off the uh, upper one. For my background layer, I am going to add back a stroke, but it's going to be a white stroke. So we're going to get rid of the dash line, make it a solid line. Again, go to the stroke palette. Click on Solid Line Style, and you can see that uh, that got rid of the dashed outline. Um, for my width, you can go ahead and tweak this just to make it thicker than your uh, your base text. Go ahead and leave it at uh, 12. I just want to leave a gap between them. I don't want them to touch. I'm going to go back over to the Layers palette, select the uppermost text, turn it back on. And this one, I'm actually going to go to the color palette. I'm going to reverse these uh, color chips so that we have an internal color. And for the color, I'm going to go ahead and make that, uh, let's go ahead and use the eyedropper tool. So go ahead and click on this, drag it down, pick it up from there, and then apply it by clicking on the color chip. And for our stroke, that is a dashed line. That's actually, I want to bring that down a bit, probably to, let's do a five. For my dash, I think I'm going to make those a little longer. That looks okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check the corners as well, just to make sure that we don't have any chopped off dash lines. I'm not too happy with how this uh, is sitting on the corner of the T, so let's go ahead and adjust the phase just a bit. Let's do 0.5 and see what that does. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and do 1. That looks a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Uh, again, I'm going to add an effect. The bevel emboss. That is really strong because those are the default values. Um, go ahead and tweak that again so that it kind of matches what you've got on the on the background stitching. Again, adjust your highlight screen. Bring that down. And you can actually see the shadow really well on this one, so I'm going to tweak that down as well. And there you go. I just want to say thank you for stopping by my channel. If this video was at all helpful to you, it'd mean a lot to me if you liked or subscribed. Share this video if you know someone that could use the information. As always, if you have questions, suggestions for tutorials, or if there is some other creative software that you think I should start making tutorials for, leave a comment below.